we're at a place now where AI content is getting better and better, meaning it can write pretty good content straight out of the gate. But do you know what gets people to buy from your content? It's if they know that a human was behind that content. It's if they know they can trust the author of that content. And that's why personalizing your AI content is so hugely important. I cannot stress it enough. Literally, it's the difference of going from publishing content that may not even bring a single sale or penny to your business to publishing content that builds trust and makes you real money. If you follow this channel at all, if you know anything about my work, you've heard about the craft framework. And yes, today's video is going to be yet another craft framework deep dive. But what I want to share with you in this video is how we're actually generating real income from personalizing content that comes straight out of AI. So if you use the AIO approach, which is something that I created along with the team at Continent Scale in January of 2023, the idea here is that you can save hours, if not weeks, and maybe even months of time developing that trust building long form content that can be 3000, 4000, 5000, even seven to 10,000 words long. So if an AI is writing that content, and of course the one I trust and use is content scale, then you're saving hours of work. If you had a human writer write that and you had to wait around days or weeks for that content piece. So it makes complete sense. Now that we're here and AI technology like Continent Scale exists, we can write amazing SEO content, the rough draft in mere minutes. It makes sense to take that and optimize our workflow. So with the AIO approach, you have a human at the end of the AI. You have a human driving that AI machine and optimizing the content that comes out of it. So in the end, content written by the AI does not get published without the human touch. And here's why this is so important. I'm going to read to you what someone said when they applied to my coaching program at Content Hacker. This person found me completely through Google, through my blog, the blog that's mostly written by AI, but with my craft framework and the AIO approach where a human personalizes that content and makes it better, makes it ideal to the audience, my brand, my style, my voice, so it doesn't just read, you know, like a bland robot wrote it, because that's not what you want. Whenever you're saving time with AI, that won't make you any money. People won't trust that content. That's why you wanna heavily personalize your content. But let me read to you what a lead actually told me. I'm gonna pull her quote up here on my phone. How did you hear about Julia? We ask this in all my forums. She said, I Google searched if chat bot content, I think she meant chat GPT content, was legal to use on a blog, ha ha. I absolutely love that I found your site via your own content marketing. And within the week, she went and bought the program. That was somebody that I'd never heard of, had not heard of me until they found my blog and immersed themselves in my content. This, my friends, is why the blog is not dead and it's not gonna ever die. Because what you create with your blog is a destination that people can literally immerse themselves into to get to know you, to get to hear your perspectives, to get to understand your actual expertise on the topic, and finally to buy from you. A few years ago, there was a study done on consumers and they found that over half of consumers read three to five blogs before investing a single dollar into that brand. This is especially true if you're in informational industries where your leads, your clients, your users need to know a lot of information before they buy. Where are they gonna go? Hopefully you've created content so they go to you, your blog, your content, your podcast versus Google searching it, ending up on somebody else's website and blog, and then buying from them. So if you're in any industry at all that takes a lot of convincing and converting to get that person to see why they need that solution or to simply educate that person before they are able to use that solution, then you absolutely have to use this approach because it's working. My site, contenthacker.com, really is a case study of this for the last six months, and I'm gonna keep doing this, it'll be years, with this approach. Around 80 to 90% of my content is AI generated. 
There is a little portion, 10 to 20% that I handwrite. If I want to get on the blog and rant or create something very personal or do an income report or something like that, you know, I'll still personally write it. But if my goal is to rank in the top of Google and that's a ton of my blogs, I'm gonna use AI to shortcut a ton of time and then I'm gonna personalize that content. And it's not me, I have AIO writers I've trained to do this process but we're gonna make this content personalized before it ever hits the internet because I want people landing on my content experiencing me, even though, yes, AI helped write it, saving me tons of time and cost. So that's why this approach is critical. It also weighs into Google's Eat, where experience, expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness all matter to the quality of your website as it is seen by Google. Personalizing your content is a way to get in front and showcase your experience to the world. Because remember, a robot can never tell us how a deep dish pizza tastes or the pain of spending years losing money because of bad tactics. Things like that you can speak to. That's your personal experience and that's how you stand out in an ocean of what will be a lot of bot written content where marketers just published any old chat GPT content and they didn't personalize it. So without further ado, let's hop on over to my desk and I'm gonna show you a before and after of actually editing content with the craft and the AIO approach. And I'm going to show you what made Mandy reach out to me and say, I absolutely love that I found your site via your own content marketing. And she went on in this application to tell us how much she related to me. When we asked her why she thought Content Hacker would be valuable for her, she actually quoted some of the content that I personalized, that my writers put into the AI content. This is why personalization, the importance can't be understated. It's critical. So when we asked her, why do you think Content Hackers programs and courses could be valuable for you? She said, I am looking for direction. I could probably find the information I need online, but I need a blueprint. It's so valuable. And it's the same reason I hope that people will sign up to my own offers. I know I will need to put work into any kind of content marketing strategy, looking for some kind of path to help cut down on my lack of clarity and overwhelm. By the way, these are things we say in my blogs and my marketing, know the language of your customers, speak it. And you know how easy it is to find that out? Get on a call with them or the next call that you have scheduled, just listen and take notes. That is your marketing message. So here's what she ended with and this is something that I take a lot of pride in. I'm actually very outspoken on my website about it. And this is how I'm going to win over a robot. A robot can't do this. I can also really relate to Julia's personal story. I love that she seems like a relatable and kind person instead of some Lambo jock. So there we have it. I was able to successfully convince her through my AI written content that I was the human she was looking for. And within days of finding that blog post, she bought. So without further ado, let's jump into it. My tutorial to show you how to take content straight out of AI and make it great, make it personalized, make it human with the craft framework. Okay, so you're here at my desk with me and I'm gonna show you how to take something literally straight out of the AI machine and turn it into a publish ready piece of content that will have leads contacting you, loving your stuff, saying, I'm ready to buy. Let me book a call with you. Let me get on your email list. Let me buy your thing. That's our goal with our content, right? So I have this framework that you can reference that walks you through exactly how to do this. You can mix and match these steps. You don't have to do them in this order. Um, this framework is extremely relevant. If you have any writing experience, chances are you've actually done some of this work before if you've been a writer. So you've actually cut out the fluff. You've actually reviewed, edited, optimized content. You've added in images, visuals, media, and you've fact checked and you've trust built. The trust built is one of the most important things. I think it's easy to cut the fluff. It's easy to review, edit, and optimize. It's easy to go get images, screenshots, and add that in. Easy to fact check, but the harder part is definitely trust building. So the first thing that I always teach my AIO writers to do is to actually read in depth the publication that you're writing for. So I would begin by reading through the blog content and the main content over on Content Hacker. If I was an AIO writer, writing for myself. So I would read through this, I would get to see the style of it 
and I would get familiar with the author's tone of voice because you're, wanna, you're gonna wanna replicate that in the AI. So that's step one, read through existing content and really get to know that writer's style. Especially, you know, if this is a client, let's say you're writing this content for a client, you need to know their style. So that's step one. So now that we know their style, we've gotten familiar with Content Hacker. Of course, this is me, my site, so I don't need to get familiar with it. It's my style for years. So one of the first things we can actually do is within the project, if you're using Content and Scale to write this content, then you can go to project settings and you can set up a custom tone of voice. And you can actually see that my tone of voice is in fact, Julia McCoy. So if I click that, I can type to find an influencer. So you can actually use my style. You can use Dennis Yu, Stefan Georgie, a famous conversion copywriter, Adam Onfroy, top affiliate blogger, Joe Polizzi, Brian Dean, or you can pick an existing style. So if you set up a custom tone of voice, you're going to get this AI training tab that will appear in Continent Scale. You're going to go in that tab and you're going to fill out the sections of content. Now, something that a lot of people do wrong is they actually throw in messy content in here and they don't make sure it's neat. So what you want to do whenever you edit this content, and I can't edit it because I've ch chosen a pre-made influencer, but if I have built my own style and I've named it Julia McCoy, then I will be able to get in here and edit the style and the samples that I'm feeding the AI so it can train on my style. So I've seen users of content scale, you know, they just copy and paste and then the paragraphs are janky and they're copying and pasting any old content. Don't do that. Please don't do that. For your AI to train on the right tone of voice, you want your best content in these samples. So think about that and really load it with good content and make sure that the formatting is correct. So for this one, I'm, I'm okay with one sample. I didn't need to fill out all of them. But in the context, I'm describing what I want the AI to do. Write witty, warm sentences. The beginning should state some sort of quick hitting scenario, fact, or quote. Follow the example below. And here's another example. And you can see, right, that I have this, the paragraph style, everything is correct. So really, whenever you add your samples, go in, take some time, it's worth it, and make sure that the formatting is correct. So now that you have your tone of voice set up, your project settings, because foundations equal success, it really is critical. Um, we're going to work on a piece of content that came straight out of AI. So you can see the difference, right? The one that we published, we have links, we have statistics. And I'll tell you, even one of these pieces, let me show you one that we recently published, how to sell my course through my blog. I'm linking to a brand new course. That's knowledge that I need to share with my AIO writer. So if you have a list of, let's say you're needing to hire the AIO writer. You need to create a list of the domains you own that you want them to link to. So this is another domain. Um, whenever I say some are launching soon, I'm talking about a new course. I'm going to link to AIO blogger AI, which is a brand new course that I'm about to launch. Oh my gosh. I want to tell people about that. I want to link to that in my content. Well, I'm going to miss that, right? The AI is not going to know that. So that is a personal touch. I would say that is the trust building piece because again, the AI is not going to know that I have this domain out there hanging out in space that I'm working on, but I want my audience to know that, right? So these are the things you need to share with your AIO writer. At Content Hacker, I have a running Dropbox list. Um, you can do this in Google Docs. You can do this in so many ways where I just let the writers know these are the things you need to link to. And I will go in and edit that list continually. So that is very important if you're referencing other domains or courses or services that you have. Um, so think about that, especially in your intro paragraph. So I'm going to go edit this one. This is a blog on how to get started building an online business. So first of all, we're going to cut the fluff. That's an unnecessary comma right there. And I'm going to make sure that the keyword is in there enough times. See how it's not. And it tells me down here, this needs to be in there a few more times. So I'm actually going to copy that. And then I'm going to use my little app called copy clip, 
which is a way I can paste without formatting. And then I'll just drop that in there where it fits. So let's do that. But where do you begin if you want to learn? There we go. We added the keyword in another time. I don't want to say e-commerce because I don't want this blog only about e-commerce. So we're actually going to drop that down a few times. And what I might do is I might go through, like see this supply chain. So let me go to supply. So what I might do is actually rewrite this section. I'm going to click more rich. I'm going to click insert new section. And then I'm going to say, get your first clients. Talk about using Facebook. Talk about using your network. Texting friends. Posting on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn to get your first initial clients. Get your first clients. And let me see if I can work in a keyword here. Okay, I'm going to hit save. And then that will rebuild this entire section with something more relevant. So keep that in mind. Not always does the AI know what topic to write about. That's completely normal. You do need to guide it. So I want to go through and make this better and more specific to me. That's one key thing specific to the site, specific to the offers that we have and specific to what we want to teach the audience. So I'm going to go through and make sure um, this is on point. You know, I might again, rewrite this section and have it more focused on how to actually start an online business. So I might take out e-commerce strategy and I might say your marketing strategy. Um, and for this, I might just change the header instead of, you know, rewriting and adding a new section. So that's a really nifty way. I just changed it up, right? So it's, So it's a lot more specific to what people want to know when they land on Content Hacker. They're not necessarily just an e-commerce drop shipping person. And we're going to go through again and take the time to make sure that's reflected throughout the whole thing. Also notice that as I'm editing, I'm adding in keywords. See how this jumped up to 70? So it did that because we added in how to sell, which is from this keyword down here, sell online, selling online. So we picked up some more optimization just by rewriting and editing the content. But I want to dwell up here with you for a minute. So we're editing, we're cutting the fluff. Here is where I'm actually going to add in a little bit about my story. So I want to inspire them with who I am personally and where I came from, this business that I started. I had a 13x, 13,000 X ROI on it. So I'm going to write all of that into this intro. I'm going to link to relevant content pieces and I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay. So we are wrapping up here on the intro. And of course I could spend a whole hour, but we do have a craft writing tutorial that is over an hour that shows you how to do everything. Definitely watch that. What I wanted to give you though, was the nitty gritty on the most important part, which is your hook. It comes before the table of contents. And in this hook, you want to do all the things in this framework. You don't want fluff. You want to cut the fluff. You want to make sure the keywords are in there and you want to add at least one image, one piece of visual content. And then you want to fact check, right? And in the intro, I usually add facts. <laughs> I'm usually bumping that fact level up a bit, quite a bit. And then I'm trust building with personal stories. So here's how I did it. This topic in particular is going to hit such a nerve with my audience because, oh my gosh, this is where people stop. This is where people fail. I have been mentoring hundreds of people for the last few years. And this is what gets people. They stop. They don't go after their passion. They don't pursue what they were called for. They don't tap into their gifts because of this. They're terrified. They're terrified of the fear of building an online business. And so what I want to do is position myself. It's really the goal of the article position myself as a guide because we do this, right? We have a content transformation system. We have a course, a community, a coaching program that shows people actually how to build a lasting online brand. It's pretty epic. 
So what I want to do is portray that early on. And then what we're going to do is in the end of the blog, and let me show you how we did it. At the end of the blog, you're going to drive that home. You are going to almost hard sell what it is you, if this is your site or your client wants you to sell. Let me tell you, treat this like a sales letter, truly, because this has gotten people to take the next step with me, like immediately. It's amazing. So don't forget to do that. That's how you're going to end your blog. But I also like to do it at the beginning, especially with a topic where, oh my gosh, I know so many people that have stopped because they don't know who to trust. They don't know where to begin. This image is perfect for them, right? Instead of a graph or a statistic, I went and got a meme because it's so relevant. And this is a very popular one. It's been, I don't even know who created it. So I think we're safe just grabbing it, right? I went to Google images because it's been recreated so many times. It's out there in the creative comments. Be careful though. Like don't take people's original illustrations. Make sure it's out there, it's used a lot and it's in the creative comments or attribute it below it. Say where you got it from. So then I'm talking about the fact that I was able to achieve a 13,000 X ROI. And then I link to that fact with the actual blog on that topic where I break down the story of that 13,000 X ROI. And my AIO writer knows about this blog. It is a critical blog in our story because it is such proof to other people why they should keep reading for me, why they should trust me, right? So again, that's why I was telling you, trust building is one of the most important pieces of this framework because it equals sales. Oh my gosh, get people to trust you, show people what you're good at. And then I'm also plugging in a couple mentions of what we do. So do that early, right? We do websites. Here's a link to my other website where we sell website services. We're gonna link to that. We're gonna maximize the crap out of this blog. If you have multiple domains where you sell multiple stuff, give it link juice on your main site. And then I'm not just wrapping up with, you know, the blog and what's coming, which this is the structure you want to do, but I'm actually early soft selling my program because, and I don't do that every time, but here's why this topic again is so close to the pain point of my actual buyer. It's beautiful that I can solve it from the get go with this program. If you have something that solves a need, like immediately, it's a great solution, then you need to sell that early on. Talk about it. Don't think of it like selling. Think of it like talking about it early on. So that's a brief look at the craft framework again for the full hour long tutorial. There's another tutorial on our channel, but I wanted to show you the difference, right? Of coming straight out of AI and then editing it to make it better. And we're gonna spend, I would say another hour going through this and making sure it is specific to our business, what we're doing in this program I'm selling. We're gonna be much more specific to it. We might add some frameworks, right? Like I have a content marketing strategy framework. I might add it here, but this is really good content. This is already written, like I would say. This process starts with understanding your audience because you can't please them if you don't know them. That came straight out of AI. But you wanna personalize it and make sure that you're talking straight to their pain points. And then I would add in a section all about our specific solution, right? Sell your course through your blog and make bank. And so we end up like this. If you need more help, that's what my content transformation system is for. We describe it and then ready to dive in, we'll apply today to become a member. And then we have this nice image that actually calls them out. Hey, are you being strategic or are you guessing? So be bold with your call outs to your programs, your services. I'm telling you, it'll work so much better. But I hope that was helpful. You really can make AI content sound just like you and you can save so much time. It's really beautiful. Just fill it with your personal touch, you know? And I have an AIO writer doing this. It's not all me. So get your AIO writer. We have more videos on that, how to find them. We actually have a full masterclass on how to find AIO writers. So go watch that next and get your AIO writer. But I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for watching this important topic, this important video. You know, the shortcut will always exist. Well, I can just hit publish. This just got really easy. Well, why can't the tool do this for me? Why can't it add in my personal experience? I was at an event where somebody actually asked us this and I looked them straight in the eyes and I said, 
If AI could tell your story for you in a better way than you could, why does the world need you? So remember, the little bit of work that you put in using the craft framework, applying it to your content, actually means that humans still have a place. So be thankful for the little amount of work you still need to do with your content. It's really your differentiation factor, and it's how you're going to outlast all the bot-written oceans of content that are about to hit SERPs. Take the time to make your content personal. Take the time to hire an AIO writer. I promise it'll be worth it. And you'll have leads just like Mandy, ready to purchase the minute they read your blog. I hope that you enjoyed this video. It sure was a lot of fun to record it for you. For more tutorials on craft, for more on the AIO approach, be sure to follow me right here on the channel. I'm always teaching. I'm always excited to share fresh insights with you as I myself learn this new territory of AI content. I'll see you in the next video.